Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and yes, uh, obviously you guys spoke up. We're going to be going with the wireless lav mic system on our videos that are in this style. Uh, thank you so much for your guys' feedback. I always appreciate it. Might not always listen to it, but I legitimately wasn't sure what style you guys preferred. Uh, so thanks so much for the suggestions. Obviously, if you want to skip to today's stories, we have timestamps down here and uh, also down in the description as well as just right in the video uh, thing there. So yeah, uh, and you can just skip to our three stories that we have for you today. Before we do that though, we are on our road to get to 80,000 subscribers. I kind of have this goal in the back of my mind to get to 80K before the end of this year. It's kind of always been my goal for most of this year to see if it was possible. Uh, and you guys obviously came through big time yesterday. Thank you so much uh, to all the people who subbed yesterday. I really appreciate all of our subscribers. Whether you've been here since day one, like a decade back or so, uh, maybe it was like 12 years back when this channel first was started as something entirely different or whether you're somebody who just discovered our channel today. Thank you so much. If we can get to 80,000 before the end of the year, I do want to do something really special for you guys. I'm not sure what that special thing is going to be yet, but let's just get to the goal and then we'll see what happens. We do have a giveaway going on right now, by the way, for three copies of Pokemon Legends Arceus. Uh, if you would like to win uh, one of those copies, all you gotta do is head down to the viral sweep link down in the description or the pinned comment to enter into that. That being said, uh, let's get into today's news. And our first story actually deals with something rather interesting happening in an update to a lawsuit. So Team Executor has been blasted by Nintendo in the court system, in particular, Gary, Bowser, who's one of the leaders, he's one of the co-leaders of Team Executor. Team Executor is a group of hackers that created easy devices to kind of cross pins and hack those version one Nintendo Switches, but they also provided software and easy access in order to pirate video games. So Nintendo basically has destroyed uh, Gary Bowser in court. And Gary Bowser's not like a spry, young, you know, kid out of high school. Nintendo's being a big bad meanie to some youth. Now nah, the guy's 51 years old. So he's been around for a while. He knew for well what he was doing was against the law. Uh, and the way they marketed it and the fact they were selling things and it all was a for-profit scheme. Yeah, people were praising Team Executor back in the day, but it really kind of is an underbelly of they made millions and millions and millions of dollars doing something that's against the law. That being said, uh, they all, Nintendo already won a judgment against Doug Bowser for $4.8 million. Uh, this was actually something we found out about a month ago. Uh, and uh, in addition to the $4.8 million that he has to pay, he also has to destroy um, any of the leftover things he has to hack switches. He has to destroy all his digital copies of games, etc. It's a, kind of a long-winded thing. I don't want to get too much into that. But the update today is that that was only one of the lawsuits Nintendo had against Gary Bowser. They also had a civil lawsuit that was actually settled just yesterday. And uh, that lawsuit, whew, he has to pay Nintendo an additional $10 million. In the final judgment papers that are out there, uh, Gary Bowser has waived his right to appeal. Um, it doesn't look like he's going to jail per se, uh, at least not yet. Obviously, failure to payment could lead to other issues. Now, again, I did mention they did make millions of dollars, so it's not as if he has no money to pay these judgments. Whether or not he has enough to pay $15 million now uh, is a totally different story. Uh, but yeah, Nintendo absolutely destroyed him. He basically pleaded guilty to everything, admitted everything that he did, uh, and it was a pretty open and shut case for Nintendo. Uh, it was just a matter of getting through the court systems because that can take some time. It really wasn't because he was disputing a lot of things. Gary Bowser, you know, to his credit, has been very open that he knew what he did was wrong, he knew what he did was illegal, and Nintendo's 100% right in everything they're saying in their lawsuit and the judgment that they want, he thought was a fair price. That, that was one thing that was interesting in there is, you might think Nintendo's being greedy, but Gary Bowser agreed that the money Nintendo's asking for is actually a fair valuation. So, yeah, uh, Gary Bowser is saying that, yeah, this is what N Nintendo should have been going after. So there is that. Now, he's not the only member of Team Executor. The co-founder and co-leader of Team Executor, Max Laurent, I might be butchering that. He's actually a French nationalist. Uh, he's 48 years old. He's actually being charged as well with a lot of the same counts, uh, although those court cases have not played out yet, obviously. Uh, these court cases with Doug Bowser took place in Seattle, Washington. Being a French nationalist, there's some other um, courts involved in that, so it's going to be a bit of a longer process but the fact that this precedent was already set where Doug Bowser's like yeah I'm totally guilty of everything uh, Max is probably gonna get hit as well maybe the fees won't be as much depending on the court system he goes through but yeah um, this is a big W for Nintendo um, a big L for hackers in a way the thing is team executor 
kind of gave a bad reputation to Switch hackers because, believe it or not, a lot of Switch hackers have no interest in actually pirating Nintendo games. Now, yes, pirating games is fundamentally always going to be part of the hacking community, but that's not necessarily what all hackers, like Oatmeal Dome, he's doing things like telling us what hidden details are behind games by data dumping them and data dumping like Switch Online updates and stuff. So there's a lot of useful information we get from Switch hackers and we report on it frequently on this channel to, you know, great joy to find out like, hey, we knew Nintendo was adding Bluetooth audio to the Nintendo Switch before Nintendo announced it because it was discovered by Switch hackers. So there's a lot of positive things that come out of it. Plus you can back up your games, which then you can, you know, emulate them on your PC, legally emulate them on your PC uh, and be able to, uh, you know, do mods to them and put Breath of the Wild in 4K and all this crazy stuff. So there's good things that come out of Switch hacking. Um, you know, people have added themes and custom UIs and even added Netflix to the system. So there's a lot of good things that can come from it, but Team Executor was one, doing it for profit, two, promoting piracy, and three, sometimes providing some of those games. So yeah, it was kind of a hot mess, and uh, that's why Gary Bowser's basically not even really fighting against the charges. He knows he's screwed. So um, yeah, probably the same for Max as well. I'll have to wait and see about that, but I wanted to give an update on this because, man, that's a lot of money to pay Nintendo. But hey, Nintendo just lost a lawsuit in Europe, uh, but this is obviously a nice W for them as well. And maybe it will make people think twice about promoting some of the hacking tools and stuff out there and trying to sell things around the hacking. Uh, Nintendo's basically won every lawsuit that involves selling things like flashcards. Flashcards back on the DS, Nintendo won a lawsuit against selling those. So selling anything that makes you money uh, while you're hacking usually is a big no-no and Nintendo traditionally wins those cases. Now it wasn't a 15 million judgment back then, it was just a cease and desist where this is, wow, I mean, Nintendo gets the dub today. Now, Nintendo updated the Switch eShop. Um, now, we talked about an update yesterday that happened in Nintendo of Europe where you can now get refunds on pre-orders. This update actually affects all regions, however, uh, because they added a new section. You might not have been on the eShop in the last 24 hours, but if you go there now, there will be a new section. It's called Most Played. And the reason I got notes on this is because I want to tell you the top five most played. Uh, so what they do right now is it's the most played games per region. So I'm obviously focusing on the US region, and it's the most played in the last two weeks. This is obviously a way to promote games and for game discovery. Uh, right now, the most played game in the U.S. Uh, for the last two weeks uh, is Desagia at number one, then Football Manager 22 at number two, Triple A Clock, yes, that clock app, uh, at number three, and then Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are number four and five, respectively. Now, there's actually 98 games on the list, and the bare minimum requirements to make this list, there's not like a requirement on number of games, like, oh, top 100, top 98. That's not how it works. You make the list, if you have at least 2,500 players, so 2,500 players, and obviously those 2,500 players are spending a lot of time playing the games. They don't specify how much time you need to be spending playing the games, but still, uh, it's very interesting. I think it's a good addition. I... <laughs> It's another way to discover games, but it doesn't really solve the problem. I kind of feel like Nintendo is admitting with this edition that they're aware that game discovery is a massive issue on the Nintendo Switch eShop, but in order to actually do anything about it, to give us that Netflix style discovery, would require completely rebuilding the eShop from the ground up, which it's probably too hard and too late to do that right now. That's something that you'd have to wait for a new generation system. So because of that, they're just trying to do the best with what they have. And this is another way to discover games. Like who would have known that the Sagia is actually the most played game in the last two weeks in the US? Who the hell knew that? And it's excellent promotion for that game. So yeah, I think that this is actually a good thing I think it's just, you know, scratching that surface of the actual issues with game discovery. But I also think Nintendo kind of screwed the pooch with it so bad to start, they can't fix it now. So this is kind of the best they can do is use already existing data to give you something like this. So it's a good thing. But I mean, it's not the fix we want, but it is the fix we're going to get for now. So this last story is just kind of a interesting one because some people complain about the game awards and all that and they don't like the media being involved. They actually went on a rant on this last night that maybe I end up clipping out and releasing on its own or redoing in a more well-edited way because I do think that there is some important considerations we need to think about with the game awards. Or maybe I just save it for the podcast and we create a podcast clip out of it. I don't know. But here's what I want to say. Um, 
there is a there is a fan voted award. There is essentially a fan game of the year award at the game awards. Um, and the reason that they don't announce it with the nominees is because the nominees are decided by the fans. There's three rounds of voting that happen and Essentially, we are in the final round. We have the top five. This is for the Player's Choice Award, uh, which again, that's essentially the viewer's Game of the Year Award. Uh, and Metroid Dread did make it to the finals. Now, it made it to the finals along with Halo Infinite, It Takes Two, Resident Evil Village, and Forza Horizon 5. It took me a second to remember. I forgot Forza Horizon 5 actually made it here where, where it's not in the Game of the Year Award officially, but it's in the Player's Choice Award. Uh, what's interesting though is that Metroid Dread at the moment is number two. Halo Infinite's running away with it, which by the way, if you guys have paid attention to when I've talked about this Player's Choice Award before on live stream, I kind of said Halo Infinite's going to run away with it because it's a popularity con. Halo Infinite's not even qualified for other awards, but it can for this because it's a fan vote, and Halo Infinite's a popularity contest. Halo Infinite technically hasn't even officially released until December 15th, and it's well on its way to win because it's got a free multiplayer beta going on that's going to transfer over. So, look, I actually think that this is really a good thing, but also, if you want Metroid Dread to win this, because maybe you don't think Metroid Dread actually has a chance to win Game of the Year, I think it has a better chance to win Game of the Year than this, but if you think Metroid Dread deserves to win, and after all, you know what, screw it, this Player's Choice Award is just a popularity contest anyways, go vote for Metroid Dread. I'm just going to tell you right now, go vote for it because screw it. It's a popularity contest. The Player's Choice Award isn't about determining the best game. It's just determining which fan base is going to show up the most in the voting. So, Nintendo fans, even if you haven't played Metroid Dread, go show some love. Let's at least make it a competition with Halo, because right now, Metroid Dread's at 19%. It's at number two. Halo Infinite, this is just at the time of recording, is at 40%. Let's close the gap, Nintendo fans. Let's at least not, like, I'm. by the way, I'm not saying Halo Infinite doesn't deserve it. I'm really enjoying Halo Infinite, but I'm saying let's... Let's raise that profile of Metroid and make it a tight neck and neck race because honestly, I don't think the other two have, um, the other three really have a shot here. It's going to be Metroid's the only thing that's going to have a chance. And that's only if us Nintendo fans actually push it up there. So um, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because it's kind of like, this is what you wanted, right? Like a lot of people wanted fan vote to matter. Well, this is the fan vote award. So go make your vote matter. Or vote for something else if you think that it deserves it. Maybe you've been playing the Halo Infinite multiplayer and you happen to think that deserves it as well. No bias here. This is literally a popularity contest, which is why I figured Halo Infinite would win because it's one of the most popular games that was on that list. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rebeljance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and you like and subscribe and leave comments. That helps spread the video around. Share it with your friends and family because, yeah, um, even though our viewership is doing well, that's because a lot of you guys are coming back to the channel um, after seeing videos in the past, whether you were subscribed or not. And I appreciate all of that support during this holiday season. Uh, but, yeah, we're not actually where we want to be just yet. Um, YouTube discovery of our channel is still not returned. I, we got hacked back in October, and honestly, you know, we're over a month out from that hacking, and uh, we still are not have seen our videos sent out to new viewers. Um, less than 5% of the views on every video come from people who've never seen my videos before when it used to be like. 40%, 60%. Now it's less than five. Uh, so while our views are good, that's because we have an extremely loyal fan base. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I really like this suit. I really like the red. I think, obviously, the holiday season, this red is really snazzy. Uh, so thank you guys for tuning in, and catch you guys in the next video.